What's up, everybody? TCM here. We're going to be talking about SMB signing disabled today and SMB relays. So let's go ahead and jump right in. So I'm going to bring up an Nmap scan and I'm going to set up an environment for you. So let's assume today that we are on an internal network doing an internal assessment. We have conducted some LLMNR poisoning and we are unable to crack any hashes. Now, if you don't know what LLMNR poisoning is, there is a video on my channel just on that topic. It is where we listen as a man in the middle attack and we capture NTLM v2 hashes and try to crack those offline. Sometimes in these instances, we are unsuccessful. So we can use a different type of attack if it is available to us. Looking at this scan here, you can see that we are on a 10.0.3 network. And at 10.0.3.6, we actually have a computer with something that says message signing enabled, but not required. Well, what does this mean? This means that SMB signing is turned off. And what is SMB signing? Well, per Microsoft, it is a feature which communications using SMB can be digitally signed at the packet level. What this means is the digitally signing of these packets allows us to know the actual origin of where a request came from. It validates authenticity. And here, if we have uh, SMB signing disabled or not required, then we don't have to do any validation of authenticity. Why is this important? Well, we can actually capture a hash in Responder and then relay it to another machine and hopefully get a shell on that machine. Now, the attack requires us to get a hash from another user, take that hash, and try to relay it to another machine in order to gain a shell. So if this is all confusing, that's okay. Uh, it's not easy to picture conceptually, so we're actually going to dive in and take a look at it. So let's set up the environment, shall we? So first things first, we have two built-in tools that we're going to be using. We're going to be using Responder, and on top of that, we're going to be using NTLM Relay X, and Responder sits in the user share Responder folder by default. NTLM Relay X sits in the user share doc, Python in packet examples. Um, okay, so in this instance, we have our Responder. We need to set up Responder in a special way. So let's go ahead and just type in gedit Responder with a capital R dot com for the config file. And if we come in here by default, you'll see that SMB is probably on and HTTP is probably on. You're going to want to type off in both of these categories. So when they're both off, go ahead and hit save. And then what we are going to do is we are going to run responder. So we're just going to say Python responder dot pi. We're going to do a dash I, capital I. I'm using tunnel zero on my network. And then I'm going to do a dash WRF and a dash V. So the reason for tunnel zero, I will show you very quickly. If we go to IF config, you will see that I'm actually VPN in on a network at 10.8.0.2. If you come up here, um, I'm also on Ethernet zero network. So if you're trying to run this locally, you're probably going to use Ethernet zero. But if you're on any kind of tunnel, you're probably going to use tunnel zero here. So be careful on what interface you specify. I'm going to set this as verbose because Python will actually store hashes and then not show them to you again. Um, we won't be seeing any hashes actually come through in this instance because we turned the SMB and the HTTP off. But all we want is to just be listening for events. And you can confirm that HTTP is off here and the SMB is off here. These are important. The auth proxy is typically off by default, so don't worry about that, but make sure your settings look similar to mine. Okay, so from here, we are listening for events. We have to couple this with NTLM Relay X. So 
we know one thing here. Our target is a target machine of 10.0.3.6. So I've gone ahead and made a targets file. If you cat out targets.txt, you see that all it has in it is 10.0.3.6. Okay, perfect. Now I am going to just type in Python NTLM relay X dash TF for target file targets.txt and dash SMB to support. Now we're going to sit here and listen for connections. What is going on behind the scenes is responder is listening for events. Remember LLMNR is similar to DNS. If a host cannot resolve, what happens is it sends out a broadcast address and it says, Hey, can anybody resolve this for me? And as a man in the middle attacker, we say we can just send over your hash. So an NTLM B2 hash is sent over. And instead of listening for the event and dumping the hash here, we're actually going to forward it over to NTLM Relay X. NTLM Relay X is going to take that information and it's going to pass from the server that it receives a hash from and pass it to the server we're attacking in the targets file that has SMB signing disabled or not required. So what happens for us to actually need to get a shell? Well, what's going to happen is our, uh, our user that we capture has to have privileged access to actually access this via SMB. So either they have to be a local admin or something along those lines. Now you can see that something just happened. I have an event that I set up that triggers every five minutes. Well, it just hit five minutes. So what happened here? Well, we are in the Marvel network and we are attacking this machine. A hash came over from 10.0.3.7 and it attacked SMB at 10.0.3.6. So we received it from Marvel's Frank Castle and it was successful in authenticating. That means this user was able to authenticate on this server as well. Now, this is important. Know that we did not need any password from this user at all. This user could have a super complicated password and we just defeated that whole process. So because we have SMB signing disabled or not required, we are able to pull down information. If you see here, we're pulling out hashes and they're duplicated and that's fine. But we have a P Parker or Peter Parker local hash. We're dumping the SAM file here. Now this is great. This works really well if you want to just dump a hash, but we can actually improve upon this process. So let's control C on this listener for a second and let's go ahead. We can leave responder up. Um, we're going to go out to the interwebs here and we're going to go to Firefox. And if you Google PowerShell Empire, the GitHub should come up, should look like this, right? Go ahead and clone or download that. If you do not know how to clone or download this video, maybe too advanced for you, you should probably go back and watch some earlier videos. This is more on the advanced side of Active Directory. So let's go ahead and talk about Empire. You can follow the instructions down here to install very straightforward on the installation process once you clone it. So we come down here now and we're in our Empire folder where we installed everything. We're going to go ahead and just boot up Empire. We're going to do a dot forward slash empire. We're going to let that one boot up. And the first thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to need to set up a listener. So to do that, we're going to say listeners. And I should have specified what empire is. It is a post exploitation framework. This is particularly built in PowerShell. They also have a Python version of this as well. So this is similar in what it does to Metasploit and Meterpreter. Um, it's just its own version of that. So here we go. Here we are in listeners and we can say use listener. We are going to use an HTTP listener. And then let's type in info. Let's just see what's set. So here we have a port and we have a host. We need to set both of these. So as you can see, I'm on tunnel zero, but it's actually picking up my ethernet interface. We definitely have to change that. I'm going to set the port to actually be port 81. 
And then I'm going to set my host to my VPN, which is 10.8.0.2. Let's type in info again to make sure it came across correctly. Now you can see 10.8.0.2 at port 81 and then port 81 here. This looks good to me. So I'm going to go ahead and type in execute. Okay, it has executed. Let's go ahead and type back. Now we need to use a stager. So basically we're going to generate some PowerShell that's going to allow this to talk back to us. And we're going to be listening with the HTTP listener that we just set up. We're going to generate that. All this does is generate some nice PowerShell. Look at this long PowerShell. We're just going to copy this. It is encoded for us. Okay, let's copy this PowerShell. And if we type in agents right now, we can see that we have um, we have an old agent. Don't worry about this. This is from before. Um, let me actually kill this agent for a proof of concept here. So we're going to kill that. All right. So uh, if we go to agents now, there should be none running or eventually none running. It's still going to take a minute to kill this process. Um, so we'll come in here and let's just tab up on what we ran before. I'm going to add a dash C in here, put quotations around the payload I just generated and then hit enter. And I'm rushing a little bit. I'm trying to get in before the, uh, the five minute deadline. As you can see, it just fired off and it'll say that a violation occurred. That's fine. You could see here that a stager just got sent and something is active. If we go into agents now, okay, the green agent is the new agent and that's the one that's actually up. So it's that LM6F. We can actually rename that if we want. We could say rename LM. We'll just call this Spider-Man. This is Spider-Man's machine. So if we go to agents again, you can see now it just says Spider-Man. So let's do uh, interact. And we'll say info. And we can see a few things out of the info here. We are on the internal IP of 10.0.3.6. We see the host name. We see the domain and we're running a system, which means we have fully owned this machine. Um, we are running through PowerShell and we could see our high integrity level is one. That means we are an admin. This is good. If we were at zero, we would need to do some sort of privilege escalation. We've got the OS details on this machine. It is a Windows 10 Pro. By default, Windows 10 Pro comes with SMB signing disabled. Um, so, sorry, car alarms. Everything's going off during recording, guys. I'm just going to YOLO out today. Uh, so normally I'd cut this off, re-record, but we're so deep in this process. Screw it. Um, so we can type in help. And you can see through help, that uh, we have a bunch of commands that we can do here. It's a lot of them. If you look at it, it's very similar to what uh, Metasploit can run or Meterpreter can run. Uh, we can run Mimikatz. cats. We can try to get creds. Um, we could do downloads, uploads. We can run shell commands. Uh, for example, we could do shell IP config slash all if we wanted to. And it takes a second to come back, but it will return. Um, and there you go. You could see IP config slash all returned and we could see information from the shell. So we can run shell commands. Um, we can do something along the lines like creds, which won't have any creds in it, but we can do Mimi cats run that and that'll task in the background and try to run and pull credentials as well. Once it does try to pull credentials, we can type in creds again and see what kind of credentials it came back with. Uh, so a lot of flexibility. We have a shell. We own this machine. Now, why is this important? This is important because, like I said, by default, Windows 10 machines or, or Windows, you know, non-server machines do not have SMB signing enabled. So with that, if we have a user that we cannot crack a hash for, but we want to try passing that user around the network in our targets file, we can just sit there and pass around all day uh, trying to get access for lateral movement. Now, if you're really lucky, the, uh, the 
domain controller or the servers on the network will also have SMB signing disabled. And then you could just sit there, point this thing at the domain controller and pray, right? You just wait for a user that maybe has a hash that comes through, you pray for it to work, and then you're done. Uh, so it looks like Mimi Cats came back. We could type in cred, see if it came back with anything. It did not. That's okay. Um, so this is it for this lesson. This is just another lesson from before. If you watched the Zero to Hero or the 15-hour video series, you saw that we did LLM and R poisoning as well. We did some SMB relay, but we never turned it into a shell. I actually challenged you guys to make it into a shell. Well, I wanted to show you a video on how it can actually be done. So this is in the top five. If I would say there are top five attacks, this is probably number two or number three that I would pull off in a network. So hopefully this video was informative for you. If you liked it, please do hit that like button, that subscribe button, leave a comment down below. And of course, tell a friend. We are gaining traction every day, guys. Um, it's amazing. Been great. It, uh, two weeks ago, we were below 10,000 subscribers. Now we're at 17,000. You guys are awesome. So hopefully you're enjoying the content, you're sharing it around, and you are, are happy, and I'm happy, and we're having a great learning experience. So until next time, I really do thank you for joining me.